day. And now, gosh, gals, here comes a real gasser. A hot biscuit right out of the old rhythm and blues oven. Your old favorites, the teen killers, doing Pete's Meat. Okay, let's drink up and go for a swim. Oh, come on, Ed. Are you going to sleep all day? Oh, so you want to be coaxed, huh? going overboard. Anywhere with you, baby, but you better ask the pilot. Hello there. I understand you run the charter service. I want to hire a plane. Now, wait a minute, lady. If this is some process service gag just to make me admit that I'm Grant Murdoch, you're going to wish you hadn't pulled it. I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. If you can go and tell Allied Motors, they'll never get the $1,100 I owe them. They've got me in court when I should be flying that plane trying to make a buck. Whatever you're talking about, Mr. Murdoch, I'm sorry, but I don't have the time for it. Just what is it you want me to do? I told you, I want to rent your plane. Okay, where to? Provincetown. Provincetown? Swell, right into a tropical storm. What tropical storm? There's a butte blowing up in the Caribbean. With lots of luck, we might outrun it to Provincetown, but not with my kind of luck. Let's put it another way. Do you want double your regular fee? Now, look, Miss... Uh, Letterman, Jan Letterman. Believe me, I'm not against money, Miss Letterman, but I'm not quite ready to sell my life. Triple. I'll give you three times your regular price. That's just about the market price for one slightly used life. It's a deal. Only we better get in the air fast. The radio operator spots us. She'll throw the rule book at me. Who are you? Another spy from the studio? This is a nice man who flies to Provincetown so we can make the dress for Oh, good. Got to make rehearsal very important. Now, you're sure you're not a spy? No, I'm your new leading man. Don't ever let him shoot you from the side. You've got a lousy right profile. Yeah, I'll try to remember that. Murdoch to E-7. 
East River Skyport Control. Murdoch to East River Skyport Hold Control. On. Come in, please. East River Skyport Control to Murdoch. Over. Hello, baby. Clock me out at 143. Destination Provincetown. Repeat. Destination Provincetown. Sorry about this, kid. Over. All right, Mr. Murdoch. Now just turn that ship around and bring it right back down here. I can't take the responsibility for this. I said I was sorry, baby, but you know how it is. I've got a woman here with a very rare blood type. I'm flying her up to Provincetown for blood transfusion. You mean you're flying her up there for a money transfusion? Well, all right, dear devil. You're a big boy now. You can take care of yourself. Over and out. Good luck. Big luck. You mean you've taken that big a chance because of us? Maybe. It all depends. On what? On whether or not we all get killed. If we do, the FAA might lift my license. Is it bad? It's not good. We've only got about an hour of flying time ahead of us. But that storm's almost on top of us. Can't you climb over it? Not even with a ladder. What is it? What's the matter? We out of gas? There's lots of gas, but it's not getting through the cylinders. I'll have to try to set her down. Where? Well, there should be some small, uninhabited islands in this area. We'll look for one of them. Maybe we ought to pray a little, too. You pray, I'll look. It will be our island paradise, Tom. Just the two of us. And Tom... I don't care if the Navy never finds us. Cut. You pray pretty good, Miss Letterman. Let's get going. I want to get this plane tied down before that storm hits. Our lunch? This one stays here. Okay, see if you can wake Miss Winters, huh? So you knew who she was all along. Are you kidding? From Broadway to Hollywood and 14,000 headlines? <laughs> Summer's thought. Oh, wait. Okay, Miss Winters. You're on your own now. The plane needs mooring, too. What's going on? This is Provincetown. Where are we, Jan? I'm not sure where we are. I only know we're lucky to be here. Hey, wait a minute. Yo, what are you doing with that plane? You were hired to drive us to Provincetown. He will, Miss Winters, just as soon as the motor's fixed. Listen, you idiot, you can't just strand me on this sand pile. My show opens tomorrow night. Just get over to that plate and fix it. The carburetor will have to de-ice itself. And right now, we better look for some kind of shelter. It may look great now, but that wind's right on our tail.
I'm very sorry if I frighten you. This equipment must make me look like one of those creatures from a horror film. Where did you anchor your boat? We flew here, sir. Ah, I see. Then I presume you landed here to avoid the storm. Oh, no. We were just scouting for Tunovich and we dropped down for a jar of mayonnaise. Uh, we had a little motor trouble. Good thing your island was here. Oh, it's not really my island. I'm just here to do some research on the station. Uh, shellfish. Peter Bartell. I'm a professor of marine biology. Look, Professor Bartell, can we just skip the formal introductions till we can get to your shelter? Oh, forgive my terrible hospitality. But I wasn't expecting guests. Please follow me. Oh, yes, you're quite right. Some little family is out searching for a mother or a daughter at this very moment. Necessary. Well, I'm Grant Murdoch, and that's Professor Bartell. Professor Miss Laura Winters, and Secretary Jan Levin. I should have recognized you, but you see, I have so little time for motion pictures. Skip it, Professor. I'm not big on marine biology either. When do we get out of here? 
Well, you can forget about it for today, Miss Winters. Even after the storm passes, there'll still be too much turbulence for flying. But we can get off first thing in the morning, can't we? I'm afraid we'll just have to wait and see. See? What? Whether we are all alive, then, Miss Letterman. This island is completely unprotected. I can assure you, we are in for a good pounding. is over. You should be able to take off now. I'm afraid not. Those tailwinds are still too rough for my ship. I see. Sorry. Look, I've got an inflatable raft in the plane. It can double as an extra bed for one of the ladies. Ah, very good. And we can build a shelter for ourselves. I have some spare blankets in the trunk behind the tent. Good. Wait, at least I can give you a hand. Oh, Jan, sweetie, would you do Laura a big favor? Bring back that other suitcase with you. The one with all my night things. All right. I'm uh, glad you managed to get away. You know, I came with you, Mr. Murdoch. Because I wanted to explain something about Laura. Yeah. How about that? The plane's still in one piece. Laura's a very frightened person, Grant. She's afraid to work and she's afraid not to. She's got a kind of private ghost that haunts her. A ghost called failure. Laura Winters didn't discover trouble the way Columbus discovered America. You can't really be as tough as you sound. What have you got against Laura personally? Is there something about her that reminds you of your own troubles? Please, skip the free psychoanalysis. Believe me, I don't have any feelings about Miss Winters. Frankly, I'm too busy worrying about some real problems. Like him, for instance. He's taken a long hike for supplies that are supposed to be just behind the tent. Well, what about it? I'm not sure. There are a couple of things that just don't add up. Like what? Well, like sharks being responsible for that skeleton. Sharks don't eat the meat and leave the bones. They'll snap off an arm at the elbow or a leg at the knee. But whatever caused this skeleton made a neat little fillet of it. Not a shred of flesh left, but every bone intact. But why would the professor lie? That's a very good question. Okay, you wait here. I'll get the raft in your suitcase. Grant, do me a favor. When you get the other things, will you bring Laura's lunch? Sorry, the liquor stays on the plane. But she's going to need it tonight, I can tell. Look, when I get her to Provincetown, she can guzzle all she wants. But while I'm in charge, no bottle parties. Everything all right with the plane? It's under control. I see you've got the shelter thrown up. Did you have to go far for the blanket? No, I've already told you. I keep the supplies right and back. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll go pump the bed up. Knock, knock. Just a minute. I just thought I'd change it to something a little more practical. That's nice. Where's the suitcase? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot it. You forgot it? What do you mean you forgot it? You can remember every bill you ever paid for me. You don't even carry an address book. That's how bad your memory is. Yet you forgot the suitcase, huh? I'm sorry, Miss Winters, but you see, when we got back to the plane... Oh, I see, all right. We're back on the reform kick, aren't we? I thought you'd given that up. 
Or maybe you're just trying to protect my reputation from these fine gentlemen. Well, that is not necessary. Gentlemen, I drink. Not polite cocktails. I mean, I drink. Uh, excuse me, ladies. I have several nets offshore. I want to make sure the storm hasn't damaged them. Just a minute, Professor. I think I'd enjoy talking to some shellfish. Surprise me, Miss Venters. Sure, go ahead and say it. Well, it amazes me that a woman like you should be attracted by a man like that. And what exactly do you mean by a man like that? Mr. Average All-American, with wings. You know, Miss Venters, muscles and a bit of suntan don't make a man. And what does? An egghead with a microscope? In my humble opinion, yes. If you take my advice, you'll and try and... if you'll take my advice, you'll keep your nose out of my affairs. You misunderstand me completely. I'm merely pointing out that real strength is never a physical thing. Knowledge is strength, self-discipline, the ability to channel us. Oh, brother. My mistake. I should have realized self-discipline is not your strong point. Or self-control, for that matter. All body and no brain. Why, you... A typical reaction. What makes you so superior, you little tin god? Stupid drunk. You stay away from me. I'm warning you. Everybody tries to take her medicine away from her. They wouldn't want to take it away if it was penicillin. Or loramycin. Or streptomycin. Or three blind mycin. <laughs> Laura's going to take the medicine back to the tent with her in case the fever gets worse at night. Okay, boys, follow me. It's 
a wonder If I close my eyes I can see his face Right there I told you there was something fantastic going on out here There they are, come on! See? Amazing. I've never seen anything like it. That's funny. I thought you'd know all about this. Scientists certainly do not claim to know everything. Only quacks do. But what you are about to do is extremely dangerous. How do you know? Oh, I would guess that these fish have been destroyed by some microscopic parasite. There's a possibility the same parasite could be transferred to your body if you should touch them. Could there be some connection between these and that skeleton that was washed up? Now, let's not jump to conclusions, Mr. Murdoch. Face facts, Professor. We've stumbled onto a living horror. Emotionalism is a poor ally, Mr. Murdoch. We must keep... There's only one thing we must do. That's fly straight to the authorities with the facts and let them take over. Hey, you two, wake up! What is it? Get dressed fast, we're leaving. I want you both ready in ten minutes. All right. Laura, let's... General, I've got rotten news for you. One of our aircraft is missing. No, it can't be. Even she wouldn't be dumb enough to pull a stunt like this. Perhaps not dumb enough, but drunk enough. Of course, that's what happened. She got good and drunk. Then she thought the ocean was her bathtub. She decided to sail her little plane in it. I'll kill her. I'll kill the idiot. I don't remember doing it. I swear I don't. Of course you don't remember. How the devil could you? You were probably blind drunk. We... I... I remember falling down on the beach. If only I could remember what happened, maybe the whole thing would come back to me. I, oh, if only I could think! Well, think about this. The professor and I discovered the beach covered with fish skeletons. Skeletons! Just like that poor devil we found yesterday. What's what is it? I'll tell you what it is. There's something weird out in that water, something that eats the skin right off you. And now we're stuck here because your drunken friend dumped the plane. Oh, no, Grant. Laura's never done anything insane like that. Not even when she was drunk. Don't waste your breath, honey. The plane is gone and I admit being in it last night. So what else can we expect the Birdman to think? He'd hang his own mother on evidence like that. I couldn't have stated the case better myself. That wasn't very fair of him. Actually, it's quite possible that the wind blew the plane out to sea. That's right, Laura. It could have happened like that. Oh, sure. And, and the rope just happened to be in my hand. And I got blown out to sea with the plane. And right now I'm under 500 feet of ocean. Oh, why don't you both leave me alone? <laughs> It's never been recorded. 
It's alive, though, isn't it? Yes, they seem alive. Well, one thing is sure. They devoured that man and the fish. And look out there. Millions of them just waiting for us. Very still. That shiny stuff is bad medicine. All right, now stand up. I can't. I'll slip. You've got to. There's no other way. I said, get on your feet! Good. All right, just step over to me. you won't. I'll brace you. Now grab hold of my hands. Why did they stop? They can't keep their balance much longer. No, I can't! All right, all right. Then move back so I can come over and get you. I can't! You're going to move back or you're going to die out here. I'll try. Go ahead. That's it. That's as far as I can go. Now, whatever you do, don't grab me in panic. Or we're both falling into that stuff. Not over yet, Miss Letterman. Strips of cloth, anything, quickly!
can bandage it later. Good girl. Are you feeling better now, Miss Winters? I'm all right. It's not easy for me to do, but I want to thank you. Skip it. No, I pay my debts. I said skip it. Jan, as soon as we get back, I want to write this off the books. Make out a check for Murdoch for $1,000. I'll attend to it. I like the way you do business. Just a moment, Mr. Murdoch. Do you happen to have your cigarettes with you? Thank you. What's he doing? I have collected our specimens. Now we can perform some basic tests with them. I think you might be able to find a way to handle this stuff? Well, I can't be sure. I have only the barest of equipment with me. But perhaps we'll be lucky. We may find some quite simple means of controlling them. After all, we possess intelligence. They do not. Of course you understand the important thing for us to learn is just how we can... Ah! Do you understand what this means? These things want flesh, any kind of flesh. And once they sense it, they lead their way through anything that comes between them and their meat. And we're supposed to just wait here until that stuff comes up and picks all our bones, naturally. Well, not at all, Miss Winters. Tomorrow morning, my supply boat will arrive from the mainland. What? Uh, how Yes, about it comes that? twice a week. All we've got to do is wait and keep away from the water. I'm going to draw a line to indicate the high tide mark. Since we are never sure where the silver creatures might suddenly appear, we must never step beyond this line, not for anything. What is it, a Martian hymn? Boy. Hey! Hey there, friend! Come right on in and rescue this poor, unhappy band of travelers! Will you keep quiet? You shut up! This guy's gonna ferry us out! Come on! There's plenty in it for you, so full steam ahead! Are you trying to get that man killed? Listen, Gunga Din! Stop playing hero! That guy's safe as long as he's not in the water! That draft's just a bunch of toothpicks tied together with string! If he paddles into these flesh eaters, he's had it! Is that what you want? Will you stop arguing? Let's do something about it. Hey, go back! Get away from here! You must keep away! Hey, hey! I think you are the lover! You are really with me! I mean, you know the truth when it comes sailing in! Hey, hey! It's no use. Do? The fellow thinks we are welcoming him. Hey, don't quit now. Keep that luck coming to me. I mean, like, don't quit. Listen, you fool, you're in danger. In danger. Man, you are so right. We're all in great danger. Will you listen to me? Will you open your ears and listen to me? Give me the word. I'm a big man for the word. Speak it or write it or sing it or paint it on barroom walls. But man, let's have the word. Shut up. Shut that big mouth of yours before you wind up a skeleton. Love drying up, Matt. I don't feel it flowing to me anymore. You're not sending any more, my people. You come too close to shore to turn back now. So you better listen closely. There's something in that water that eats flesh. I said eats flesh. People, right down to the bone. Where's the love, Matt? Don't tell me about that ugly jazz. These things are small and silvery. And there's a bubble. Ah! Get the gate, the gate. Get away from me. Get away. I told them. Told them that love was the only weapon, but they wouldn't listen. Now the geek is here and wants to take me first. 
Because I know about the wet. Cut that up! Get out and start paddling that raft for sure! Oh, I'm not afraid, Max. The, the geek can't get me. Not Omar. Uh, Omar's got the love wet. Never mind that. Just get in here, you trick. Hey! Stop! Stop! Don't move, my friend. Don't move a step. What is it? That's not the weapon, man. Love is the weapon. Shut up and hold still. What a bad show, Max. It took me three weeks to make those sandals. I mean, they had the love in every stitch. Look, lover, I want to show you something. What's the gig, Max? Hey, don't squeeze my muscle. That's my plan. I just want to show you what could have happened to you. You mean that little silver stuff ate all the meat off them bones? Yep. Boy, that's one loving appetite. Say, what makes them do it? You think they want the world to hate them? They want to be punished because of some guilt complex? Hey, you think maybe they're just kooky? I do not know the conventional synonym for this word, kooky. But I wouldn't impute any neurotic drives to such a low life. Hey, crazy, man! You speak the word! Lay on me some more with that neurotic drive jazz, and let me have a little of that edible motivation music. Sing me some more! Please. Now they're all here. Dr. Cyclops, Gunga Din, and now Buster Beatnik. Huh. Oh, heaven protect a simple Lady Lush in a place like this. Oh. After you on the coffee, please. And by the way, we're not casting any Bridget Bardot pictures today, thank you. Sorry, but you know what happened to my blouse, and I didn't have anything else with me. Well, don't worry about it. I'll get you something of mine to wear. You know what your trouble is, of course? No, Omar. What is my trouble, of course? You got a sour liver. Yeah, that's right. Too much meat, too much sugar, spices, coffee, white bread, alcohol, onions, and sex. Well, I can do without all those other things, Doctor, but you can't expect me to give up onions. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start to clean up. Oh, please don't trouble, Miss Letterman. There's really nothing to do. Uh, hold it a minute, Professor. There's still a little nourishment left in there. How about taking a stroll? I'd love to. Oh, but do you think it's safe? As long as we stay inland. Don't worry, I'll take good care of you. Oh, Jan, wait a minute. I found something for you to put on. That's awfully considerate, Miss Winters. I'm sure it'll go just fine with her slacks when she gets back.
met a sweet, innocent young flower down in Texas near the end of the war. The whole thing only lasted ten days, including the three-day pass for our honeymoon. Then what? For nothing. I went overseas, flew a dozen missions, and then the war ended. Which was a break for me, but not for her. It turned out that this sweet, innocent Southern Belle had already had two other husbands in the Air Corps. Oh, no, Grant. Oh, yes. Two tail gunners who never made it back. You see, she was in business. At $10,000 worth of GI insurance per tail gunner. At the end, she confessed that she had been a little in love with me, or else she'd never married a pilot. They came back more often than tail gunners did. But that was years ago. You must have had time to get over it. I guess so. Only sometimes I'm not so sure. You see, I actually love that little tramp. Looks like even the birds want no part of this place. You know that's true. We've seen very little wildlife since we've been on this island. It's the last we're gonna see. Afternoon, Jim. Might late today, ain't you, Matthew? I sure am. I slept till noon. Last eight? Fish don't wait. What kept you? You knew Ruth and I went down to Boston last night for our anniversary. Fish were running good, up to ten o'clock. Oh, well, tomorrow's another day, Jim. We'll start out bright and early. The Lord give each one of us just so many days. Waste one, you never get it back. Ruth and I almost didn't get back. You must have heard how the hurricane washed out most of the shore road. Say, what about that college fell out on Baker's Island? He get through the blow all right? Wouldn't know. You mean you haven't even gone out there today? You told me you'd make a special run. Told you I might. Our deal with him says we don't run there but Mondays and Thursdays. Thursday don't start till tomorrow. You've got about as much heart as a hammerhead chuck. And you've got a lot to learn about business, boy. Hey, where are you going? Where in hell do you think I'm going? Devil is it? So that's it. So that's what? I've never seen one this big before, but my guess is this is the granddaddy of all solar batteries. Solar battery? Each one of these discs contains over maybe 100 cells, which convert light into electricity. A gadget this size could supply enough juice to barbecue Brooklyn. I wonder what Bartell's doing with all this power. Actually, I have no use for that much power. Speak of the devil. Where'd you come from? From the tent. I've been looking all over for you. I have something quite interesting to show you, if you will follow me. I've already found something that interests me. Oh, this? What are you doing with 10,000 volts of electricity? Really, I must insist that we start back at once. Of course, I gladly tell you all about my fabulous toy along the way. You see, a colleague of mine at the university, Dr. Morton, has been developing this unit for several years now. And my little field trip seemed the most convenient opportunity to test it. And now that we are all together, our experiment begins. Let's get on with your test, Professor. Very well. I believe you may have a weapon. See? I told you there's a weapon. I'm not referring to love, Homer. Electricity. You mean you think you'll be able to shock these things to death? The theory is unimportant. It's a test that counts. I don't know whether 10,000 volts is enough to kill them. I do know 
It can kill me. I think you've done it, Professor. Yes. I think I have. Did you see that? Ha! He gave them things a hot seat. Congratulations, Professor. <laughs> okay, everybody, start packing. Not quite yet, Miss Winters. There's still much to do. Look, here's a solar battery. We we'll run an extension cable down to the beach. There we we'll splice on two single wires with electrodes at each end, positive and negative. Once they hit the water, 10,000 volts will cause for the flesh eaters. So. Well, it makes sense, but what can we use for electrodes? The frying pans are perfect. You and Oma get the solar battery cable down to the beach, and also the two reels of wire from behind the tent. What about you, Professor? I'll be along as soon as I put away some of this equipment. Okay, Oma. Let's go. Listen, how heavy are those reels? I'm not too big for this hard work jazz. It's Troy's initiative. minutes, 20 seconds, following 10,000 volt shock, specimens appear lifeless. Time, 54 minutes, 55 seconds, still no observable change. What is it? What could have gone wrong? I used too much voltage. as far as I'm concerned. the only one, honey. All right, Gunga Din, now what do we do? They're sure to send another boat to investigate. Man, when they find that pile of bones on that launch, nobody's gonna try sailing in here again. Then we'll just hope we can get out on what's left of that raft of yours. Come on, we got a lot of work to do. Did you see? Not all, but enough. I was in the tent when I heard his screams. By the time I got outside, well... Poor guy. You seriously think we can shoot 10,000 volts of electricity through the entire ocean? Of course not. We'll use just a small strip of shore. But let's look for a less contaminated area. We'll circle the island. You and the ladies go that way. Oma and I'll go this way. We'll meet on the other side. Okay, it's a date, but let's get moving. If you get the ice, I'll start the drinks. The ice box is back there. Okay! Drinks are almost ready. Crazy!
taking it straight? Oh, yes. Well, he is to life. I'll drink to that. Hey, you've got that jar covered Just up. Just laboratory procedure. I'm a man of habit, even on a desert island. You know, for a second there, I thought maybe you covered it out of respect to those things you killed. <laughs> Pretty kooky idea, huh? Yes, very kooky. And now we drink. Man, that hit the loving spot. funny. I once wanted to be a scientist. Really? What field? Nuclear physics. Ah, uh, I thought it'd be a boot smashing them stupid atoms. Ah. Uh -huh. Why didn't you continue? Man, I was all for it. They wanted me to cram my skull full of differential calculus and quantum theories and all that jazz. You can get an attic machine to do that stuff. <laughs> All I wanted to do was butt some little old atoms. What is it, my friend? You seem in pain. Oh, nothing. Little indigestion, I guess. I'm gonna have to give up beans. Of course, that's not gonna leave me much else to eat. Already gave up meat and bread and sugar and... Doesn't look too bad. Great. Let's tell the professor. Ah! Listen. I told you I heard a scream. Bartell. He slipped away from me. I warned him, but he wouldn't listen. He was only interested in saving himself. Listen to those screams. They're eating him alive. It's all over now. I'm glad he's dead. He's better off. Yes, that's right. He's lucky. He doesn't have to wait to die. It's over for him. All right, cut that out. We can't afford any hysterics. Frankly, Mr. Murdoch, it does begin to look a little hopeless. Now, without even a raft... We can build a raft. Grant's right. Nothing's really changed for us. If we can kill the flesh eaters, we can still escape. Count me out. We'll all end up the way he did. The only difference is you'll break your back stringing that stupid wire. I'm going back to the tent. All right, we'll wake you when it's all over. Professor, we found a stretch of beach that looks like a better bet than this one. It's on the other side of the island. No, it's more logical to make the test right here. If we are successful, we can always move the equipment to the other side. Agreed? You're the expert. I want to cover a good-sized area. You two lay out all the cable in that direction. I'll take the other area and go this way.
Please, Miss Winters, it's hot and this work is tiring. If you have come to make jokes but about I it... But I help you, Peter. Oh, you've changed your mind? Yes. About several things. Well, then, suppose you begin by placing the wire in a straight line as I unroll it. A straight line, Miss Winters, please. We cannot afford to waste any wire. You know, I was thinking about what you said last night about intellect and what it takes to really make a man. What is your point? I mean, take this fellow Murdoch. I mean, if it were up to him, we'd all have gone wading into the flesh eaters, waving a flag and singing the Air Force anthem. <laughs> but then take yourself. Calm, observant, working everything out in a logical fashion. So? Oh, look, Peter, let's not beat around the bush. If there's anyone who's going to come out of this thing alive, it's you. And I want to be on your side. Really? But what makes you think that I have any special magic which could save the two of us? Okay, I'll lay my cards on the table. I know that you know more about these creatures than you're willing to tell. You think that? I know it, Peter. I took a peek under the sheet covering the specimens. They're alive, Peter, and as frisky as they come. I see. And what makes you think that I was aware that they had come back to life? Oh, come on, Peter. You don't have to be afraid of me. I don't care what you're up to. It must be something important, I know that. And I know you must have thought it all out long ago. You're very practical, Laura. And very exciting. Even the smell of you is exciting. Let's get out of the sun. Let's find a bit of shade. We'll discuss the matter further. doesn't make sense, Grant. Why should Wartell want to keep his booty? I don't know. But if he doesn't want to, why big talk us out of wiring the clear side of the island where we'd have a better chance? Maybe he's right. Maybe it would have been a waste to carry these heavy reels over there if it's not going to work. Honey, if it's not going to work, then everything's a waste. But that's not the only question he's going to have to answer. And he'd better have the answers. Be more specific, Mr. Murdoch. What is it that bothers you? Why have you suddenly become so suspicious of my every move? Wait a minute, Professor. Why is there so much to explain? You've got answers to all the questions, but why are there so many questions? It's because our friend Murdoch has an ugly mind, I'm afraid. Oh, yes? 
Well, I'm afraid I'm getting ugly-minded, too. Bartell, where were you last night when Laura went out to the plane? That's one I must have slipped up on. Good girl. Okay, Professor, where were you? Uh, I must have been asleep. Not for quite a while. We shared that blanket shelter, remember? I woke up when you crawled in. It was hours after you walked down to the beach. Well, look, this is ridiculous. Next, you'll accuse me of stealing the Empire State Building at high noon. Perhaps without my identity, too. Here, let me show you my university credentials. Well, Mr. Murdoch, do you honor my credentials? What the devil are you up to? Oh, it's simple enough. But while I explain, you will splice the electrode leads to the power line, Mr. Murdoch. Then in 1947, the United States government sent me to Germany in a top secret project because of my knowledge of the language. With other scientists, I was asked to inspect papers left behind by the Nazi war scientists. Yeah. I'll bet you enjoyed reading about those insane experiments. Packing living men in ice, draining their blood to find the precise threshold of death. Nice, constructive work. Really, Mr. Murdoch, is it so much more pleasant to die from the atomic bomb than from a hypodermic needle? Okay, cut the philosophy. Go on with your story. The Nazi marine biologists had indeed done some interesting work. Very creative work. The flesh eaters? Precisely. A German biochemist had been investigating the mystery of the virus. A strange phenomenon which is neither living nor dead. When he accidentally created a new life form, it had a most peculiar metabolism. It would consume only one form of nourishment, living matter. You see, the unique properties of this laboratory creation were... Stop that instantly! You will not unwrap the second power lead until the first is spliced. Did you think I would be fool enough to let you throw a live power line in my face? Where was that? Oh, yes. About biochemists. A very low order of science. But uh, this particular biochemist had made a very important discovery that soon became a top secret Nazi war project. Tanks of heavy water and other atomic and biological equipment were shipped to a private estate in Norway along with some of the best scientific minds in Germany. The Allies shook the laboratory walls with their bombings. But the experiments continued. already knew much about the flesh eaters, but there was far more to be learned. How fast could they consume protein? What was their rate of reproduction? What was the safest method of transporting them to a target area? How would they withstand extremes of pressure and temperature? Soon they were ready to test their new weapon. cheapest laboratory animals available in Germany, human beings. The scientists took every precaution never to contact the flesh eaters themselves. To mathematically remove any chance of error, they repeated each experiment countless times. Flesh eaters were as efficient as their masters. One final 
Bell test was designed to prove their similarity to viruses. Since the virus never attacks non-reproducing cells, a fresh corpse was dropped into a pool of flesh eaters. The corpse emerged unharmed. Such a film impresses me. Well, they're almost as stupid as airplane pilots. However, the Nazi marine biologists soon saw what an enormous economic weapon they had here. Even a small amount of these creatures could wipe out the entire fish supply of North America. To say nothing of the people. Yes. Well, um, a submarine was to drop the test tube into the waters off the southern coast of Florida. Then why didn't it work? Who knows? Or possibly the timing device for this fantastic creation of science misfired. And the cork was never popped from the tube. Not until many years later. What did Washington do about your report? There was no report. The Nazis had burned most of the papers. A poor underpaid marine biologist named Peter Bartel burned the rest. Wasn't that clever of me? America waited very patiently. I carefully read all the marine publications. Finally, in 1950, the Florida authorities reported the strange destruction of millions of fish. A second such catastrophe took place off Georgia in 1952. Later, the Carolinas reported similar disasters. Soon I was able to diagram the precise course of our protein eaters. But I still don't see how you plan to make money from these things. Don't you get it? He's going to take them to some war department somewhere. Think what the monsters would do in the water supply of New York or Chicago. Mr. Murdoch, you underestimate my patriotism. Of course I will offer our own government first bid. However, if Russia, or Britain, or Germany should happen to bid more, well, I'm not a... Super patriot. No, you're not. But I'll tell you what you are. You're a dirty, sadistic suck. Shut up! And now, Mr. Murdoch, you will throw the first electrode into the water. Get moving. How's killing those things going to help you? You still don't understand. The electric shock I gave the salmon creatures in the tent merely stunned them. Once I repeat that process here, I can safely place the quantity of them in special containers and... You mean the things in the tent came back to life? Of course. I'm sorry you didn't see the final result of my experiment. Miss uh, Winters did, however. Laura, where is she? I'm afraid Miss Winters will not be able to join us. The great lady has taken her final bow. You killed her. <gasps> you killed her! You planned on killing us right from the start. No. I had hoped you would fly from our island before the fish skeletons began to show up. But it was not to be. Well, why didn't you kill us then? I have good news for you, as you will see. And now you will throw the electrode into the water. But this time, no useless heroics. Good. And now you'll do the same with the other electrode. And your job will be almost done. Almost? After we have electrified the water, it'll be necessary to test it. To see if all the flesh eaters have been sufficiently stunned. And so you, Mr. Murdoch, will lie down in the contaminated area. You... animal! You will lie down in one of the contaminated areas and be our guinea pig. All right. 
in the meantime, Mr. Letterman, you'll go up to the tent and bring back the lead cylinders that will serve to store our monsters. Isn't there anything... I'm afraid not, honey. Go on. Let us proceed. The moment the other electrode hits the water, the circuit will be complete. I know enough about the flesh eaters to realize. <laughs> Preposterous, huh, Martel? Okay, suppose you give us an answer for this thing. A nucleus. A charge of energy bound the amino acids <gasps> together. And it forms. <gasps> Mass has some kind of tissue. A bullet can penetrate it. Stopped. It's just waiting for us down there. Oh no, it's going to climb up. Let's keep running. Fools! You can't escape by running. Have you forgotten that this very moment the sea is giving birth to a creature 100 times the size of this one? Never mind. I'll still have the final victory. I will cheat the flesh eaters with the only weapon I have left. Our lives. <laughs> out. You won't need this. You've fired the last shell. Grant! Well, what is it? Laura's body. The flesh hasn't even been touched. I know how it works. 
was killed. How? You mean, you mean we had a chance? Blood killed it. Blood. Laura's blood. It drips straight into the nucleus. Yes, I see. Hemoglobin sensitivity. The fish skeletons were washed up in a pool of blood. And, and the birdcage was covered with blood. Right. The silver things rejected it. But the nucleus was super sensitive to it, enough to die from a direct injection of it. Then we can defeat the other one. Exactly. But only if we use our own blood. Shot right into the heart of it. We've got to rig up some kind of giant hypodermic needle. Yes, but we've got to hurry. That monstrous thing is forming in the water right now. There. That should do it. This blade will pierce the eye and then... I will have to puncture each of us a number of times to extract a sufficient supply. Well, let's get started. The beaker, Miss Letterman. That suit of mine will protect you from the silver things long enough for you to kill the monster. Thanks. Let's hope it does just that. Grant. Don't worry. Bartel? In a moment. In just a moment. Bad, Miss Letterman. I would have preferred to finish the job without force. Now what, Bartell? Now I'll save myself from the electric chair for two murders. Two? What is it the Arabs say? Where there is no witness, there is no crime. Okay, you still want to run this show? Go out and take care of that monster yourself. I think not. I don't believe you'd care to watch Miss Letterman die.
Thank you.